And I want to take this opportunity to reassure the people in this city, this region, and Americans across our country that our counterterrorism and law enforcement professionals at every level, federal, state, and local, are working together around the clock to prevent attacks and to keep us safe. Moments like this, uh, I think it's important to remember what terrorists and violent extremists are trying to do. Uh, they are trying to hurt innocent people, but they also want to inspire fear in all of us. We all have a role to play as citizens in making sure that we don't succumb to that fear. Uh, and there's no better example of that than the people of New York and New Jersey. President speaking earlier today when he did not yet know that the Linden, New Jersey PD had shot and taken down the chief suspect. The president is now in New York for at least two days for the U.N. gathering. That meant earlier we were able to invite White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest here to the studio. I began the conversation asking if we knew anything more about the suspect. And they're still gathering as much information as they can about this individual, and they want to make sure they understand everything they can about the, uh, yeah, obviously they've done a, a, a search of his home. They want to understand about uh, his relationships, uh, what kind of communications he may be having with people both in this country and anywhere else. They want to try to understand exactly what may have motivated him uh, to carry out these acts. So there's a lot of work that's still being done. Uh, we're very, in the very early stages of this, but here's the one thing we definitely know, Brian, is that this is a great example of state local and federal law enforcement working seamlessly together. I mean, if you think about sort of how all this came together, we had a detonation in New York City late on Saturday night. By Monday morning, the FBI put out an alert about an individual. Several hours later, that individual was in custody, and they knew that that was the person that was responsible for the attack. So this is, this is a testament to what law enforcement can do, and these are our brave men and women who are putting their lives on the line. These are skilled experts who are evaluating forensic material, pursuing investigative leads over a weekend, uh, and keeping us safe. How high is the confidence that he acted alone. We've heard this all day from our public officials. Yeah, look, I, there seems to be some confidence, but they're not going to declare that until they've been able to run down every lead uh, and make absolutely sure uh, of what they know or what they think they know about this individual. So uh, I'm not in a position to make any pronouncements at this point because we want to make sure that we're following the facts where they lead. Um, on Saturday night, before we knew of the story in New York City, uh, cable television fans uh, were watching your boss give a speech at the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation dinner when there came this moment. I will consider it a personal insult an insult to my legacy if this community lets down its guard and fails to activate itself in this election. You want to give me a good send off? Go vote. Is that what a tightening race looks like? And is that what a threatened legacy looks like for your boss? Yeah, I think it, it, it is an, it's a clear illustration of the president's sense of just how high the stakes are in this election. The president has poured his own blood, sweat, and tears into his presidency, obviously, and he takes that very personally. He's proud of the remarkable progress that our country has made, avoiding a second Great Depression. I mean, the numbers from the census that we got last week that indicate that we've got basically the strongest income growth for households in America on record, and that that, that growth was most pronounced at the lower and middle income levels is a real testament to the economic strategy that he's pursued. The success that we've had overseas in terms of preventing Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon, fighting climate change. All of this is progress that we've made in this country that the Republican nominee is promising to roll back. The president takes that very seriously and very personally. And he made a personal charged case to his strongest supporters saying, my name is not on the ballot, but all of the progress and change and hope that we worked for over the last eight years absolutely is on the ballot. And if we aren't as energized and engaged in this election as we were when my name was on the ballot, then the last eight years uh, are uh, at risk. What about the language of our times politically? Is the president at a disadvantage because of his office? I'm sitting here looking at the New York papers, uh, one of them just says terror, uh, a word the New York mayor pointedly did not use Saturday night. Are, is there a double uh, standard that, that Donald Trump feels that there is a political correctness in our political speech? Well, I I'm not sure it's easy to articulate exactly what uh, the Republican nominee's philosophy is for all of this. I, I, I get the sense that he is uh, very skillfully chasing these kind of headlines uh, and trying to leverage them for his own maximum political advantage. And that's gotten him quite a ways. Uh, and he is somebody who has demonstrated an ability to surf those headlines. 
uh, for his own benefit. The question is, that may be a pretty effective political strategy. At least it, it proved to be in the, in the Republican primary. It remains to be seen if that's an effective political strategy in a general election. I think the president has some doubts about whether that is an effective strategy for governing the country and leading the free world. Prior to this uh, series of apparent terrorist attacks, um, the lead story going into the weekend was the day of birtherism on Friday. Um, do you view birtherism as a case closed, something the president will never speak of yeah. again? Look, Brent, I, I actually happened to be in the White House briefing room uh, back in that, on that spring day in 2011 when we literally, on paper, passed out the long-form version of the president's Hawaiian birth certificate to reporters in the White House briefing room. And that was the day that we thought it was done. That was the day that we thought we had finally put it to rest. Uh, but, you know, a, a variety of interests uh, on the internet and in real life have trafficked uh, in this for one reason or another. Uh, and, you know, their case uh, apparently has changed a couple of times over the years. Uh, but ours hasn't. And uh, uh, the president's case, back in that day, the president sort of coined this term in terms of describing uh, the purveyors of this information as carnival barkers. Uh, and those people have been effective in getting attention for themselves. Uh, but that's not a strategy for running the country. That's not a strategy for making the American people safer. That's not a strategy for creating jobs. Uh, and those strategies and a debate about the most effective way to do that is what the president hopes uh, and would like this presidential campaign to be about. Josh Ernest, thank okay. you very Thank much. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for coming to the Very studio. nice to see you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.